Hello, everyone, and welcome to SparkCast Episode 3. My name is Gina Phillips. I will be hosting today, and I am joined by two very special guests. Now, before I get into this, I just want to say, if you haven't listened to Episode 1 or 2, stop what you're doing, listen to those, then check back in with us, okay? Because these this is a great series, and we don't want you to miss anything. So uh, I want to talk quickly about the Spark magazine, dubbed EN3. Uh, it's, we've got a fall issue, and we're looking at the leaders, uh, major players in the industry, like Oshawa Power and Utilities Corp, to cutting-edge startups. The issue also zeroes in on how Eastern Ontario gives these critical sectors a boost. But also there's tips for energy-proofing your home this winter, a local chef feature, basically people to watch. So make sure to visit thesparkmagazine.ca to subscribe for your free print and or digital copy. Okay, let's get going on today's episode. So we're going to be talking about the Durham Regional Technology Development Site, aka Durham RTDS, because that is just easier to say. And we are talking to two very special people, Sherry Colburn, President and CEO of Spark Center. Hello, Sherry. Hello, Gina. How are you doing today? Very good. Excellent. And to your left is Chris Gillis, Manager of Applied Research Business Development at Durham College. Hi, Chris. Hi, Gina, and thanks for having me. Yeah, it's fun to be here in person, live right here at the Spark Center in downtown Oshawa. What a great building we have here. It's a bit of a sleeper, but yes, it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> and back face to face. Yeah. We're getting there. Yeah, I know. It feels good. It's a very vibrant energy here, which I really like. Yeah, absolutely. So as far as today, we're going to be talking about Durham RTDS. What does that mean to people? Maybe, Chris, I'll talk to you first. Explain it. Uh, That's a really good question because I think we still have work to do. Uh, I'm not sure if you sort of tackled anyone on the street and talked about the Durham RTDS. They would really know what you're talking about. (laughs) But but I think fundamentally, um, you know, we're trying to help uh, the region of Durham and all of Ontario uh, do a great job to get ready to adopt electric connected and automated vehicles. Okay, that's exciting. Yeah, I think so. And it is also kind of cool. I would say it's sort of trendy right now to discuss electric vehicles in general. Um, Yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't think an awful lot of people in the population really get what's actually happening. I mean, they think we're going to just change from internal combustion engines to electric vehicles. But it's really the connected and automated. And I think where things in the past maybe went wrong a little bit is we talked about autonomous and showing my age a little bit if uh, if you know you know the Jetsons and the flying cars uh, we're not going to see that anytime soon Mm -hmm. but electric connected and automated is here today right so it's kind of like a hybrid situation yeah Yeah. absolutely not full Jetsons quite yet not quite yet (laughs) Uh, Sherry I'll talk to you so you're the president and CEO of Spark Center Mm -hmm. so you work with different partners what does everybody bring to the table yeah so I mean I think the Durham RTDS is kind of unique from some of the other uh, regional technology development sites because we are a consortium so uh, we consist of Spark Durham College, uh, Ontario Tech University, and the region of Durham. Um, and I think uh, if I if I started sort of holistically and said what we're bringing to the network, the the biggest the biggest value that we bring is that we are really uh, integrated with the community. So if you think uh, I'm gonna I was gonna say think back, but you're way too young for thinking this far back. I'm too yeah. young to think this far back. <laughs> um, so if you th- but if we think back to where we went from horse and carriage to gas, you know, I mean, pandemonium. I do remember those days yeah. <laughs> vividly, vividly. <laughs> So just chaos would would ensue, right? Because people are riding horses and doing whatever they want, and now all of a sudden you have a need for roads, and you've got infrastructure, and you've got lighting, and you've got rules and regulations. Um, And so as we move from combustion engine to EV-connected autonomous vehicles, there's a lot of um, interconnectivity, a lot of data, a lot of smarts, and there's going to have to be a lot of regulatory, and there's going to be... Uh, there's going to be ramifications to the grid. So there's just a lot going on. Mm-hmm. And I think what Durham RTDS does probably the best 
if I may say, shameless I, plug for that's us, okay. um, <laughs> is that we have our own municipality, the region of Durham, as one of our consortium partners, and they are bringing, you know, real uh, infrastructure challenges to the table, uh, and we, as mm -hmm. the three institutes, I'll call them, uh, are really looking for people to solve the problem, and then we demonstrate those. And I think it gives, doing it in that way gives the world an opportunity to see the technology working, experience some of the challenges, and then we'll bring those decision makers to the table to say, oh, mm -hmm. okay, now I get it. Now yep. I know what we're solving for. It sounds very collaborative. Very collaborative. It is. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say, as, as Sherry said, we really are consortia where the others tend to be mono institutions. So, um, you know, and, and we've been working at it for a while. So Yeah, we have. Yeah. 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 What is this transportation challenge? Uh, uh, the official title is the region of Durham on a safe and accessible transportation right. challenge. So uh, it, it kind of, uh, I guess, uh, segues from from Sherry's uh, thought uh, and and really what we're what we're trying to do here is understand a community need and so I, I guess what what we wanted to do is really understand um, what were mobility challenges currently because one I think the things that is maybe missing uh, as we talked about the Jetsons isn't going to be here anytime soon but we all want safer intersections and so that's really have to be one of the first ones it's really about uh, the community identifying particular challenges and then we're going to help bring, uh, I guess, entrepreneurs, SMEs with technical solutions to focus on that. And we, what we hope to get out of that is then an interesting solution to a current problem, but also becomes kind of future proofing because it, it helps uh, decision makers and legislators actually see what's really happening. And it helps actually improve the technology, which, of course, we need that as it evolves. So who brings that challenge to the table? Uh, the region actually has agreed to do three of these, and we're hoping we can persuade a couple of the other municipalities to also do that. Uh, and then really it's the RTDS partners that help work with uh, them to publish it, broadcast it out, uh, and then we're helping kind of with the evaluation of the uh, respondents. Okay, very cool. And you have an event coming up on November 3rd, I hear? Mm -hmm. Yes, we do. Uh, this is our annual Future of Transportation and Mobility Series. Yes, um, and, uh, is there an acronym for that? Or? FTMS. <laughs> <laughs> There's always an acronym for everything. There is, yeah. yeah. DRTS, FTMS. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it, and it's an event that we've been doing for some years now mm -hmm. in partnership with Hamilton, uh, which is CITM. And um, another acronym. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we just, we kind of, uh, kind of bring our resources together, uh, bring our networks together. Mm -hmm. uh, we have very um, complementary focus areas. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, the event on November 3rd is uh, in partnership with the Hamilton uh, Regional Technology Development Site. Um, yeah, and I'm hoping lots of people come out to it because they're always really fun. This one is an interesting one this year. It's going to be a bit of a hybrid where we're doing virtual, I think, in the morning. Yes. And then we've got some panels. And then there's a break. And then we are... Um, respectively going to our actual facilities and having a networking session so it should be uh, oh, should be okay. fun so who should <laughs> attend that would you say anybody uh i would say startups uh, okay government um economic development transportation people academic institutes test yep. facility people a any companies medium-sized companies that have sort of mm. technology in this space or are looking to partner maybe with companies that yeah. have uh, technology in this space. Okay. Um, yeah, we're just looking to put all this and maybe together. Maybe our regulators and our politicians, yes. you know, people that are going to be instrumental in building the rules and the the governance mm -hmm. around mm -hmm. how this is going to function. I mean, I think it's wonderful for them to come and yep. hear firsthand what you know, the what's new coming. king, the perhaps n the new king. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, hey, here we go. We Charles, could please probably do the yes, demonstration. Yes. First order of business. Yeah. <laughs> Get exactly. to Durham. <laughs> Hamilton. Uh, but speaking of that event, I do have websites in front of me uh, where people can register. Speaking of acronyms, uh, yes. we've got ftms.citm.ca yeah. or through durhamrtds.ca. Absolutely. Great. Yep. So head there if uh, anyone out there listening is interested. Sounds very cool. Uh, and where can people find out just generally more information on what you guys are talking about? 
Well, I would say the website for sure is mm -hmm. probably right. the best first place to go. Mm -hmm. uh, and then from there, if they have further questions, there's an uh, info, I think, at Dermar TTS, uh, and there's contact information, and then we can sort of get that inquiry to the right partner or person. Yeah, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. would you say to people kind of interested, like, hmm, maybe this is for me? Um, wow, okay, because that's a pretty broad <laughs> question. Um, but I, to kind of share his point, you know, it depends what their interest really is. And, and, I, and I would say, you know, both, uh, well, both. There's the technology interests. So we all really want to work with uh, companies that have technology in this space that, that they think will benefit a community. Uh, then there's the regulators. Uh, we know that demonstration projects help inform them as to what actually happens and what is needed in terms of legislation. Um, and I would say to uh, those who want to maybe help educate the general public, uh, I, I, I think the public really needs to understand this better. Uh, it's not just electric. It's sustainable. Yeah. It's it's a whole lot of other things. It's Cyber our future. Security. Well, yeah, yes. I, it's funny. I was talking to someone the, this morning, and I remember when we had the Whitby shuttle project. Yeah, And we did a project. public event on a Saturday for them to see it. And I, I watched a father with his two daughters. One was probably about five and the other about eight. And I took a picture of it, and I think the post I put out was, you know, these kids are going to grow up, and, and when the youngest reaches that age, she may never, ever need to drive. Who knows, mm. you know? Wow. So crazy to think about, but uh, but very exciting, and I think can be hopeful, right? I think so. Mm -hmm. I think so. I mean, uh, a lot of young people, and well, not even so young people, <laughs> need to think You're about referring to me. <laughs> no, yeah, no, don't look at me like that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> resembled that remark. Right. Okay, there we go. <laughs> uh, be careful of that. Yeah. Uh, but but it's going to change job mm -hmm. opportunities, job prospects. So depending on where you are in mm -hmm. that whole uh, sort of journey, um, you know, and it's going to do it fairly quickly. I would say in the next two to five years, it's, it's starting right now. Like I think of I think of my grandson. So I am yeah. an, a shameless EV driver, um, and uh, uh, you know love 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 driving my Tesla. Awesome. Uh, and but my grand cool looking Tesla. It's mm -hmm. a nice. Yeah, right. it's I nice can Tesla, picture yeah. you in a Tesla. Yeah, I see that for you. <laughs> and my uh, my grandson though is nine, so you know his his folks drive ice cars, uh, but Grandma Nana drives an EV, wow. and he has completely bought in to the Kool-Aid, as mm -hmm. I like to call it. Mm -hmm. I mean, he always, always says, we'll, we'll be somewhere and he'll see a car and he'll say, Nana, bad for mother nature. Yeah. Wow. Right? So, I mean, he's already processing mm -hmm. it like to that level of like, that's not he good for it. mother nature. Your car is good for mother nature. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think there's a whole generation of kids that are going to well, they're grow so up on that Kool-Aid, They're quick right? to adapt, whereas Absolutely. we're just still kind of in the mud of it yeah. mentally, Absolutely. right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Good way to put it. <laughs> yeah, and, and we need to see what's kind of coming. And just one cute mm -hmm. little story, if I can. Um, you know, when you, when you talk to a lot of the big organizations about electric connected, they talk about zero accidents, zero emissions, and zero congestion. Mm -hmm. um, and so just if you think forward to what zero accidents actually means, uh, that's about a million people a year on the planet that are alive, that didn't die in traffic accidents. So that's a good thing. A lot of that will be sort of connectivity, technology, and jobs. But one of the interesting things uh, that we found out somewhere is that uh, somewhere between 40 and 60% of organ donations for organ donating mm. programs mm. come from vehicle fatalities. Oh. So potentially there could be a shortfall oh, yeah. in that area. So interesting, all the side effects well, of, of this, right? Think of auto insurance, mm -hmm. emergency rooms, all of this. And then down at uh, an event in Toronto pre-COVID, I remember hearing a company that said it had a 3D kidney printed that is suitable for human transplant. So wow. how, where did that all go sideways? Yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. Wow. Yeah. Just new technologies popping up to even counter this Exactly. Shift. Yes. And oh. that's just kind of one example yeah. of how so many things are going to go sideways with this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's Fascinating really stuff. Thank yeah. you for breaking it all down for me, Sherry and Chris. This has been awesome. Thank you cool. for, I, I mean, this is my t first time hosting the Sparkcast. I hope that I come back to do more because I feel like I'm learning as I'm listening to you guys. So everybody listen to Sparkcast episode one and two if you haven't already. It's brought to you by Spark Center. 
And don't forget, if you want to learn more about Spark Center's quarterly business and innovation ma magazine, I almost said machine, my brain is on technology, clearly, The Spark, you can visit thesparkmagazine.ca to subscribe. And stay tuned for next month's episode. And if you're interested in becoming a Spark Center client, if you love what you heard today and want to know more, you can visit sparkcenter.org. I'm Gina Phillips. Thanks so much for listening.